We are finally about to witness the massive Starship rocket take flight once again, and this launch is closer than you might think. SpaceX's fifth Starship test flight was originally expected to take place in November 2024 due to delays from the Federal Aviation Administration, which required extensive environmental reviews and consultations with agencies such as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. These reviews were driven by concerns over sonic booms and their impact on local wildlife around Starbase, as well as other environmental factors associated with such a large-scale launch system. Initially, the FAA estimated that the flight wouldn't occur before late November, and SpaceX was prepared for this extended timeline. This delay was caused not by safety concerns, but by what Musk described as superfluous environmental analysis and unnecessary consultations. The FAA had already delayed previous launches, and this fifth flight became subject to ongoing scrutiny, particularly concerning its sonic boom radius and water discharge permits. However, recent developments suggest that the timeline for Starship Flight 5 might be moved up, with a potential launch date now as early as October 13th. After completing its first full-stack test last month, SpaceX has made significant strides toward preparing for Starship's fifth flight test. Among the most notable tests is the use of the chopstick system, designed to catch the Super Heavy Booster mid-air after launch. SpaceX upgraded this system by reinforcing the structure to handle the immense load, adding padding, and performing welds to ensure stability during the booster catch attempt. The preparation accelerated even more by October 4th, when the hot staging ring was lifted onto Booster 12, and later in the afternoon, Ship 30 was moved into position. By the evening of October 5th, SpaceX successfully completed a second full stack of Starship and the booster, bringing them closer to Flight 5. However, this was just the beginning. On October 7th, another key test took place with the closure of Highway 4 to conduct fueling operations. Venting was observed at the orbital launch mount and launch tower, indicating the system was ready for fueling. Frost on the tanks of Ship 30 and Booster 12 confirmed fuel loading, although it appeared to be partial as the frost didn't rise too high. A day later, SpaceX tested its water deluge system, essential for launch safety, which confirmed readiness after a long period of inactivity. This series of tests signals that SpaceX is inching closer to Flight 5, which is now targeted for October 13th, pending regulatory approval from the FAA. One of the most ambitious goals for Flight 5 is to catch the Super Heavy Booster mid-air using the Chopstick system, part of the Mechazilla launch tower. Catching the booster in mid-air would drastically reduce the turnaround time between flights by eliminating the need to retrieve the booster from the ocean or use drone ships, as has been done in previous missions. The Super Heavy Booster is a gigantic, standing at 230 feet tall and capable of producing 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, making it the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. The sheer size and power of this booster make landing it challenging enough, let alone attempting to catch it mid-air. Traditional rockets like those from the Space Shuttle era or previous missions were either discarded into the ocean after use or left in space as debris. These boosters were not designed for reusability, making every rocket launch a multi-million dollar endeavor. SpaceX revolutionized the industry by being the first company to successfully reuse a rocket booster. Since 2015, SpaceX has been landing Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters either on autonomous drone ships at sea or on land-based landing pads, significantly reducing the cost of launches. These boosters are typically refurbished and flown again in a matter of weeks or months. However, catching the Super Heavy booster mid-air using Mechazilla is an entirely new approach, designed to make the recovery process even faster and more cost-effective. If SpaceX can pull this off, it will mark another major milestone in their quest for fully reusable space vehicles. Now with Flight 5, SpaceX is attempting its most daring booster recovery yet. After about six minutes into the flight, the Super Heavy booster will have two options. The first is to perform a landing burn and splash down in the Gulf of Mexico, similar to how previous Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters have been recovered. 
The second, and far more ambitious option, is for the booster to perform a controlled descent and attempt to be caught mid-air by the Mechazilla arms. This gives SpaceX the flexibility to make a last-minute decision based on real-time conditions. While this is an exciting development, it is not without its risks. Catching a booster mid-air is an extremely delicate operation that must be executed perfectly. A single error could result in the booster exploding on impact, which could damage the surrounding infrastructure, including the launch tower itself. The Mechazilla Tower is worth billions of dollars and represents years of work. In fact, during the first Starship test flight, Musk remarked, It's a success as far as the tower is not damaged, emphasizing the importance of protecting this vital piece of infrastructure. You might wonder, given the risks involved, why SpaceX is attempting such a bold move without conducting more real-world tests. The answer lies in SpaceX's confidence in the technology they've developed. While they haven't tested this catch system with an actual booster and catch tower, they've conducted numerous simulations. During the fourth Starship flight, SpaceX ran a detailed catching simulation using computer models. In this virtual environment, they simulated the landing of the booster onto a virtual Mechazilla tower, and the test was a success. This gave the engineers the confidence to attempt the real thing in Flight 5. The booster catch will only be attempted if all systems are deemed healthy and conditions are perfect. If any system fails to meet the strict criteria set for the catch, the fallback will be to perform a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, as done previously. Safety is the top priority here, not just for the booster, but also for the valuable infrastructure. The risk is not just about losing a booster. It's about protecting the billions of dollars of investment in the tower and surrounding infrastructure. While SpaceX has nearly completed preparations for Starship's fifth test flight, the last major hurdle is obtaining the FAA's launch license. The FAA can take longer than expected, as seen in previous launches, where SpaceX has waited months after completing all preparations. Musk has voiced his frustration with the FAA on multiple occasions, calling out their slow regulatory process. He even tweeted, Enough is enough. In response to delays, accusing the FAA of overly cautious and bureaucratic approaches that hinder progress. The FAA's delay is often tied to concerns about public safety, environmental regulations, and technical issues. For example, during Starship's earlier test flights, the FAA required SpaceX to address environmental impacts like sonic booms and potential effects on local wildlife, adding time to the review process. Even after submitting all required documents, the FAA may extend its review, as was the case with Flight 4 when the process took months. Musk has publicly criticized the FAA, arguing that their slow approval process prevents the U.S. from advancing quickly in space exploration. He highlighted how the agency's cautious approach to licensing could hinder the Artemis program, which relies on Starship to land astronauts on the moon. In one instance, Musk even suggested that the FAA's delay tactics were politically motivated, leading to public disputes between SpaceX and the regulatory body. In addition to these public statements, SpaceX has previously faced fines from the FAA for allegedly not adhering to licensing requirements during launches in 2023. Musk responded to these fines by threatening lawsuits, calling the fines regulatory overreach. These incidents reflect an ongoing tension between SpaceX's fast-paced innovation and the FAA's deliberate safety-focused regulatory process. If you've stayed with us this far, we've got a special surprise just for you. We're offering a limited number of highly realistic Starship models on eBay, exclusively for our loyal viewers like you. Your dedication means a lot, so head to the description below, click the link and grab your model before they're gone. Thanks for watching. And we can't wait to see you in the next video.